Silicon Valley Bank is actually closed for trading today after being off more than 60 percent in one trading day. An absolutely shocking turn of events for Silicon Valley's most important bank. But were there any warning signs that we could look for and see that there was some actual real trouble at SVB going back over the last couple of years? I think there are three. This video is for educational purposes only. It should not be considered investment, legal, or tax advice. It is not an offer to buy or sell any security. Past performance does not indicate future results. Investing is risky. First is what I would call fishy meetings. I was reading an article from Mike from Non-Gap Investing, and he made a very astute observation SVB's proxy statements disclose how often each committee and the board and things like that get together. And what you'll notice is a couple of things. The first is that the average amount of meetings per year uh, ranges from four to seven. But in 2022, there were 18 different risk committee meetings. That is one red flag. The second red flag is that Laura is already was the chair from 2016 to 2021. She resigned and starting in April of 2022, there was no chief risk officer at SVB, which for a major bank seems to be extremely troubling. Which brings us to warning number two and one that I think is very timely for a lot of different stocks, which is sudden C-suite departures. I can think back to a lot of cases where the CEO or CFO or COO leaving without much warning tends to be a pretty bad signal for the stock. For example, just consider whenever Iger left Disney, stock absolutely tanked after he left. There recently was a abrupt uh, CFO resignation at Nextera for some uh, dodgy activity. We're yet to see what that means exactly for the stock. Another one, which I don't think was due to any major activity, uh, was Howard Schultz leaving at Starbucks. Seems like pretty much any time he leaves, you should sell Starbucks, and when he comes back, you should buy it again. But the list goes on and on. Anytime a C-suite person resigns, that is a major red flag. Consider that these people have spent literally their entire careers climbing the corporate ladder at what is most likely the same employer they've had for many years, if not many decades. So for them to all of a sudden resign without any warning, without any health issues, without any clear explanation given, that is not a good thing. And that is exactly what happened. From the 2023 pre preliminary proxy, it talks about Miss Izzeretti, can't pronounce her name, but it says she departed on October 1st of 2022. She was the chief risk officer, but you can see that they entered into a separation without cause. So she stopped serving in the role of chief risk officer as of April 29th, 2022. And then she transitioned, uh, but she left the company on October 1st, 2022. In the interim, there was absolutely no official chief risk officer named, as we saw in the last slide. But the number one warning, and the one that I think is most practical to you, doesn't require you to look into proxy statements, is to pay attention anytime there is a major insider sale, which is our number one warning and number one indicator that there may have been some problems at SVB. I want to highlight a couple of transactions. The first happened on December 1st of 2021 by President and CEO Greg Becker. On December 1st, he sold $8.7 million worth of stock at an average price of $698, which is about right there. So $8.7 million at almost the absolute top in the stock. And then just five days later, on December 6th of 2021, the now departed chief risk officer, say I can't say her name, Laura Izzeretti, she sold $4.17 million worth of stock at an average price of $698, right there. So we have over $12 million of insider sales happening within five days of each other at the absolute peak or close to it of the stock's price. But that is not all. On February 27th, 2023, 
Greg Becker sold another $3.5 million worth of stock for an average price of $287. Since that happened less than two weeks ago, you can almost guarantee that Mr. Becker knew that there were some significant issues with the business and that they were going to have to go out and try to raise additional capital. It seems like the probability of this happening just kind of happenstance and maybe he just happened to I don't know, need a couple million dollars to, you know, I don't know, buy a couple new Ferraris or something. I don't know. We can't necessarily say for sure that there was any kind of ethical issues here, but it certainly doesn't smell right. So any stock that you own, if you see any kind of questionable behavior from the top CEO, CFO, COO, really anyone at the top of an organization, I would urge you to keep heed of Robert Noyce's quote. He says, if ethics are poor at the top, that behavior is copied down through the organization. It's critically important to understand who the leadership of a business are. Exceptionally good CEOs are ethical. They are aligned with shareholders' interest. Unethical behavior from unethical CEOs involves what we've just seen in this slideshow, some dodgy decision-making as far as risk, and also some very clear, nicely timed insider transactions that stuff the pockets of the C-suite at the expense of regular shareholders. Behavior like this is absolutely inexplicable and disgusting, and I would urge you, if you're considering investing in the stock, you think it's a good deal, Maybe it is, but just remember, unethical behavior at the top filters throughout the organization. I personally would not touch the stock with a 10-foot pole. And again, a shout out to Mike at Non-Gap Investing for an exceptional write-up and for digging up a lot of this information. A lot of the credit from this video goes to him. So I'll put a link in the description to his website and you can be sure to check that out. I don't know Mike, I'm not affiliated with him in any way, shape or form, but I thought this was a really well done piece. In next week's video, we're gonna be answering a question from one of these subscribers asking why is it that Warren Buffett invests in dividend paying stocks, but Berkshire Hathaway, which is the company that he owns, not owns, I mean, he does own some, but he also runs it. Why does the company that he run not pay a dividend while he invests in companies that do? If you're interested in getting access to that early, uh, you can check out my Patreon page where I'm going to post this uh, in advance of next week. Thank you again to all Patreon and YouTube premium subscribers. Thanks for watching the video and I will see you in the next one.